I think me and Darren both know that our time has kind of come and gone as far as the national scene goes, and I know I'm fine with it. I think he's fine with it, but I think we both get a lot of pleasure out of it when we've got a guy like Showtime or, heck, even a referee like Mike Knoxville, and we get an email or a phone call saying, hey, you know, how about uh, sending four of your guys up to St. Louis for a show? And for both of us, that gives us a lot of pleasure because that's kind of like our kids being taken and offered work in other places and getting their name out there outside of their local bar, their local show where mom, dad, girlfriend, and just one town gets to see them. So Jacob Ladder and myself actually got us into the uh, Georgia territory. And Ladder and I exploded on that on the scene, and we uh, we were doing a lot of big stuff, main eventing a lot of cool shows. Once we started ACW, we really haven't traveled that much, because that was the whole point of it. But now we figured we had gotten calls from the Georgia companies that we had worked for previously, and they'd wanted us to bring a group of guys. And Ladder wasn't really interested, and I wasn't overly interested, but I knew I had a lot of young kids on the ACW roster that I wanted to bring over there and expose. So I loaded up my car with myself, Rachel Summerlin, Barry Breeze, and Massive. Knoxville. Mike Knoxville also went. That's what I am, a bag bitch. It should be interesting to figure out how to put four more people's gear in here, huh? We're going to some place in Georgia, and all I know is it's just north of Atlanta, so it should be fun 15 hours in the road in the car. First trip to Georgia without Jacob Ladder was quite different. Traveling with Darren and Rachel had its good times and bad times, and not because of the bad company, but being in a car with anybody four days a week for two straight years, you, we all get tired of each other. The fact that you're never around, you never see each other, almost every conversation is a goodbye. And it's a lot easier if you don't have to have those conversations. We don't have to say goodbye because I uh, just get in the car with her. It's a lot easier to travel together, to be together. We actually get to spend time and something that's different with our relationship than any other relationship I've seen in the wrestling business is uh, I actually like her. <laughs> what? And we actually get along and we have a good time. You're over there. <laughs> doesn't matter if you fart, doesn't matter if you fucking burp, doesn't matter if you snore. You learn how to cope with that person for 15 hours the way over there. You learn their habits and you get to know people, you get to meet people over there. Traveling so much does have the wear and tear on your body and mind and everything else and it takes a lot out of you it takes years out of you I'm tired that's pretty mildly i feel like a zombie dude we're on our way to what's the name of this town we're going to i'm going to drive for 16 hours <laughs> yeah, right? don't stop <laughs> and i'm just going to continue driving two more hours two more hours yeah we're about two hours away Enough to get like a 30 minute nap and go do the show and then get another 45 minute nap while everybody else is working and then drive 500 hours back home. Okay, so it's a big red building? Alright, cool, that's where we're at. I drove truck for a living, so I was used to it. Um, I had my ways of helping me drive uh, that nobody knew about. It was really the first time that Darren kind of stepped up. Darren was the only uh, promoter, the owner, really, going on this trip. He had to make sure that all the, the talent that he brought represented Anarchy Championship Wrestling well. So you can't really get in on me, you know what I'm saying? Like in a real fight? I don't know. It's you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
make a reach all the way around? Bringing some kids out to a new territory, try to show them the ropes, see what the road's like, have them work some guys, get their name out there a little bit in a different territory. This really is pretty sad. I remember whenever I was main eventing for this company, and we had hundreds of people. And we had main events like Derek Childs and Jacob Ladder. People are like, are this, is this the same person? They're like, is this the same person? Like, I'm like, does it look that different? I'm like, oh. <laughs> no. no, no, we're different. So this is what we do to try and get gas money for the road. Sell pitches. I paid 89 cents a copy. Sell them for five. Gotta make some gas money. And basically we got there, they weren't real organized for some reason, and I ended up doing a lot of the booking on that show. Rachel ended up wrestling, which was really cool, and massive, worked Barry Breeze. Sick bastards! <laughs> Alright, it's the first time going out of state anywhere to wrestle, and I got the shit kicked out of me. It was fucking awesome. Thanks to Massive, man. Coming out here to Georgia, it's a beautiful thing. But ACW, it's not about money, it's not about, you know, who goes over, who goes on top, or anything like that. It's about passion. A lot of, a lot of guys, they don't have that anymore. They lack passion, they lack the drive. You know, I was away for two, three years, and I missed it. It was just burning inside of me. I worked the main event in some eye for an eye spike table thing. So apparently, Bobby Hayes, I believe it is, got wind that I was in town, and he got stuck at his real job. First off, what kind of professional wrestler has a real job? Bobby Hayes got stuck at his professional wrestler has a real job. Wait, it's tonight, 235 pounds. He's the NRC Championship Wrestling Champion. The road is a million times more grueling than any match I've had. Before a match, I can I can know that I'm going into like the most deadly, most like sickest fucking contraption in the world. I know that I'm gonna get cut, I'm gonna get sliced, and I'm gonna get hurt. And all I'm thinking about in that 15 minutes is like, fuck, as soon as this match is over, I have to drive home 20 hours to Texas. And it, it sucks getting kicked in the face with barbed wire. It was one of my arm that really bothered me, though, because that literally, that's the first time it stuck. And I couldn't pull it out. It was just like my skin would move and it was all... You, that's when I learned the skin was had a lot of elasticity. And it was just fucking gross. But yeah, I was a bloody mess, I believe. I don't even remember the match too much. It wasn't my defining moment by any means. You are great! barbed wire getting lodged in my arm and I had to like get the ref to yank it out and it pissed me off pretty badly. It's no ACW. No! <laughs> no that is. Everything's like kind of a step back. Really. Yes. Pretty much everything. Especially the pin. Yeah, because I put it around him and it was all in me. I was like... It's real barbed wire. You can, you can go, go, play you can go with feel it. it. It's uh, it's stuck in my arm. How could you not see that? I'm not home yet. It's overall, it's not over yet, but it's all right. It is what it is. You can't expect it. See, this is what I mean about passion: blood, guts, glory.
Nobody wants that anymore. Nobody has it anymore. Everybody just wants money, but they don't want to work for it. Nobody. We got stiffed on pay, as you know, you can expect in the wrestling business. Because everything I said tonight was a fucking shoot about people having real fucking jobs. I get that you might have to, but you don't let that interfere with this right. shit. That's you right. know what I would have done on a shoot if I had to be in that situation? I would have quit my job and I would be looking for something else tomorrow after I did my match. That's if you really shoot. wanted to work. That's what you really want to work. That's what it's about. A lot of guys say, I can't lose my job because I make too much money. But they don't want to sacrifice to make it to the top. That's the problem with the business the fucking today. middle. They're fine at the bottom. Where else are you going to drive? 14, 15 hours? Come get your head busted open and then drive back? That's what I'm talking about, passion. But this is the mecca of professional wrestling. Waffle House. Every wrestler who's ever worked a show is eating at a Waffle House or they're not really a wrestler. It's pretty much as big as your first match. You always remember Waffle House. We go to the Waffle House afterwards. We eat like motherfuckers. We come back bloated. You learn how to run the ropes, how to take bumps, you learn how to and where all the Waffle Houses are on the road. Camera out of my face! Or have camera, you will not. <laughs> 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 Georgia was fun. Reason being, that was probably the longest road trip I've ever been on. It was stressful. Driving all that much. I just, but I loved it. To watch my friends go out and perform. This is like our seventh fill up of gas. We've spent approximately $400, way too much for this trip. Although this is going to be like half the cost of going to Philly. I wish this was my job. I'd so rather do this and wash cars all fucking day. Eh, fuck it. Pays more. <laughs> Sad, but true. I think we, we put on a good show. I mean, they want us to come back. I think the kids we brought represented ACW very well. They, they went, they sacrificed like all of us have to do, they got on the road, they did their jobs, they did them well when they were there, and it was all in all, it was a really fun trip, it was, it was a good experience for the kids, but it was pretty much the only talent exchange we've done so far. Thank you for visiting our crib, our crib. and now it's time <laughs> to get the fuck out. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Atlanta GA with us, but now that we're back home. It's time to go take some showers Fresh and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Bye, Jonathan. What if you've ever been, you know, a big fan, followed independent wrestling, you should know that the hotbed is Philadelphia. One of the many things on uh, my uh, list of responsibilities to do with our company is like come to the air air airport and pick up superstars, like Massive. I'm picking him up right now to uh, go to Philly to the arena on Saturday. Well, you're a pro wrestler? When you're a pro wrestler? You get guys to carry your back. Jesus. You need this much stuff for three weeks? We set out, myself, Massive, Mike Knoxville, Rachel Summerlin. Wrestling. Uh, in order to get your name out there, you must travel the roads, as we are doing today, heading to Philadelphia, driving to Philadelphia. Life of an independent wrestler is hard. Nobody realizes it. You're driving on the roads eight hours a day, you know, to do a show for ten minutes, and you get paid twenty-five bucks. 
Everybody wants to make big money. You don't make big money independently. I'll tell you that much right now. I haven't showered. I'm on 24. What? So, yeah, I'm I on 24. shave my ass. Yeah. Don't print that, man. I've slept an hour. That's all you slept? Yeah, dude. I slept eight. I haven't slept a shit. You getting all crazy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but being on the road wears and tears you. I'm 20 years old. 21 this Sunday. Soon. A couple hours. But um, I'm 20 years old. And I feel as though I'm about... 26, maybe 27. Hi, I'm Darren Childs. We're in Delaware. We're, in the we're actually about to be in Delaware, but we're in the uh, I-95. I have a feeling it's gonna be more than two bucks. It's two bucks? Yeah. You've never been for a toll road massive? Fuck no, this is my first time. This is a lot of first for everybody. Yeah, it really is. I feel like going to sleep for another six hours in a room. What can you do? This is the life of an Indian wrestler. Always checking your finances. To see what you have, what you don't have. Don't get my card number, fucker. See like, what you don't have. See what you don't have. See what you have. See what payments have gone through. See what happened. And it's funny because this looks like it's 6 a.m. But it's actually fucking like noon. <laughs> don't worry about it. What time did we get in? Like 5 or some shit. Yeah. After a 35 hour drive, way past Philly to Atlantic City. And the adventure begins again. This is so fucking filling out, it really is. That's what's so shocking about the whole thing, is like it really is like what you would think Philadelphia would be. It is everything you've seen. In the straight movie. up fucking just dirty blue collar fucking. Well, that's what I was Everybody's saying. all 1984 would out. It's exactly like it is in the fucking movies. There it is, bitches. Yeah. Yeah, I need like two steps. Time for talking's kind of over. We'll go. Chillax. Try to get the right mindset. I'm nervous. Excited. I'm sure I'll be a lot more nervous when I get when my music hits and I get there. But it's all worth it. It will, it, it, it will be all worth it. Yeah, it's just crazy where we're at right now. Philly fans, I hear, are some of the hardest to to appease to to make them like your stuff to get over with you know I came out and I heard some yays and some boos and whatever you go out there I'm, I'm Rachel Summerlin you know here I am and we went out there and we we went all over the place for the most part except we couldn't go into the crowd I remember that because that was one of the rules and then as far as the match goes it was it was very nerve-wracking <laughs> We get there and uh, nobody really tell. They, I knew what I was doing, like what my match was, but they didn't tell me my place on the card or like, you know, time or anything like that. I had no idea basically like what was going into it. Holy fuck! I'm the main event at the ECW arena. Introducing team number one from Austin, Texas. We started off the match with 38 seconds of straight chair shots. Some of the most fun I've ever had. I was like, wow, I, I finally get to check something off the list of shit I have to do before I die. Well, it's uh, approximately one o'clock, Philadelphia time. 
I just finished doing one of the most brutal fucking death matches of my career. Um, I went up against the best, what can I say? Something that a lot of people could, told me that I couldn't do, you know, that I wouldn't make it anywhere, that I wouldn't go anywhere outside of Texas. But <laughs> proving them wrong, that's what you gotta do in this business if you wanna make it, you gotta prove them wrong. Uh, Darren Charles was getting that getting fixed up. He had to have his head glued uh, together in the back. Uh, he took a pretty brutal shot. But other than that, now we're on our way out to Atlantic City, man. I'm Mike Knoxville. This is Atlantic City. in town, no hotels, so we went to Atlantic City and partied, which really we were all beaten the fuck, none of us could even move. I don't know what I'm doing, how do you win this game? I think I won like a dollar. I didn't have anything to drink. Um, and that was it. And we went back to the hotel, slept, and then Mike Knoxville drove us home. Again, all 1,400 hours of it. Being able to handle the road, the travel, the people, the politics, that's what makes you a star. It's not going to be how technically sound you are. Because, as you see, a lot of people aren't fucking technically sound. They're making a hell of a lot of money. It's just dealing with it, the grueling aspects of the business. Because their hair is stuck to the blue. And the hair's like, yeah, you can see like the glue on it. And plus the blood. Shake it with this and let me look at it. I worry all the time about him when I see his matches. I think at this point though it's become kind of, um, I've kind of become unfazed by it. This is me as a ref, this is them as performers. They need more rest than I do. Um, my job was pretty simple. One, two, three. That was it. Uh, theirs is a lot more difficult. So it was just a decision I took upon myself. I've been on the road for close to, oh, uh, let's say about 39 hours now. I still got another 24 hours to get to San Antonio. I'm tired. It's well worth it. When we'd stop and you know, this is part of the reason, part of me leaving, um, is I'd go to the bathroom and I'd do take a little speed. It's the way I kept awake. At first, it was wow, you know, it's a lot of a lot of people, and uh, then I heard Darren's music hit, and I was like, holy shit, he's made it. And taking some of the stuff I took to stay awake, I've kind of. I ended up starting to lose a lot of weight, weight and you could see the, the bags in my eyes, but you probably still can see the bags in my eyes. And I haven't had anything for a week and a half now. No alcohol, no, just my cigarettes. Shows my good luck charm right here. Miss Sh the Mrs. Show Stealer, Rachel Summer. You're the show stealer. She, oh. yeah, Darren. I didn't no even say that out loud, but she's a show stealer. That wasn't really much. That wasn't really much. Badass. He just paid for I gas. I paid for my take gas. Nice. <laughs> we want to see Rachel really succeed, and we want to see Rachel get out there and become a bona fide big name female wrestler in this country and in Japan, hopefully. That was it. Was quite a trip. It was really good to say that I've done it, and it was. It's a big part of my career, and it's something I'm always going to be proud of. Yeah, as See, long as you're at Ladder's House at this 9 a.m. This is the end of the you trip. You want. You'd be at Ladder's House at 9 a.m. We're rolling for four days. Thank you. See, that's, that's the good journey handshake right there. That's how it is. Peace. Uh, oh, you got to always keep your eye on the crowd. You never know if they're going to throw something in. You never know if they're going to try to run in. You never know if they're going to try something stupid. 
So, I wanted to do the first ever flaming table in South Texas. I have never seen anybody burn for that long with, with that, without uh, going to a hospital. That was, that was wild. The quality they were putting on shows you don't want to miss, but at the next show I went to, I just had to become a wrestler.